This crop is affected by a serious plant disease called red rot of sugar cane. Red rot of sugar cane is caused by a pathogen called Coletotrichum falcatum. The cane which we generally use for extracting sugar juice from where sugar is extracted or sugar is produced will turn red in color apart from that the entire plant sugarcane plant leaf leaf bases stem everything is affected by the presence of the pathogen we will look into the details of this red rot of sugarcane in this video red rot of sugarcane is caused by the fungus called Coletotrichum falcatum it comes under the kingdom fungi division ascomycota class sordariomycetes order glomerulales family glomerulaceae and the species is coletotrichum falcatum you are seeing the infected canes where the internal portion of the sugar cane is uh, looking red in color, reddening has happened and this is the characteristic feature of red rot of sugar cane. It is one of the most severe known diseases of sugar cane which was first reported in Java by Wendt in 1893. Now the disease is spread all over the world, it is reported from many nations where the sugar cane is grown in the world and the disease actually wiped out the entire sugar cane plantation during 1939 to 1942 in Java. Coming to the symptoms of this disease, the symptoms are seen in almost all aerial parts of the plant, uh, mainly the drooping and withering and yellowing of the upper leaves occurs initially. Similarly, a wilting of the entire crown of the sugarcane plant uh, leading to the death of the plant occurs. In uh, severe conditions, uh, the plant will die and the entire uh, sugarcane will turn into red, uh, dark red in color, uh, which renders the sugarcane useless for any purpose. When it is not so severe, the eyes, which are actually the uh, lateral birds, frequently they die and they turn black in color. The dead areas extend to the outer parts of the nodes also. Characteristically, when you split open the sugar cane, the inner portion of the sugar cane, which is called the rind, from where the sugar cane is extracted, it turns red in color. That is the characteristic feature of this disease. You are seeing in this image, the rind has turned completely red in color, sometimes dark red or even black in color. When you cut open the sugar cane, take a transfer section also, the uh, central vascular region has turned red in color. On the right hand side, you are seeing the acervuli, where you can see the elliptical elongated uh, uh, structures which are called the acervuli, which are the structures in which the conidia are produced. So, acervuli uh, are the ma main uh, symptoms that appear on the leaves and leaf sheets of sugarcane plant. Uh, the protoplasm of the uh, sugarcane actually turns uh, red in color, gummy in nature and this actually oozes out and it enters into the intercellular spaces and it is found and it is because this only reddening of the sugar cane occurs and there are irregular discolored blotches also are seen in the internodal regions apart from the reddish yellowish white or red margins that are there on the leaves and also on the leaf bases. So these are the uh, some of the important symptoms of the sugar cane disease called red rot of sugar cane. In this image you are seeing the falcate conidia, sickle shaped conidia. These, these white areas what you see on the leaves and also on the stem with red margins are the positive proof of the disease. 
sometimes what happens is the entire plant shrivels the black uh, specks appears on the shriveled rind the stem shrinks at the nodal region when you cut the uh, cane actually split the cane vertically you'll get characteristic uh, alcoholic smell that is due to the presence of this fungus and even the st stem internally appears red in color the upper leaves of the stem they turn pale and gradually they droop down as i've already mentioned the leaves then wither and tip of the uh, leaves along the margin they actually wither and they'll bend and then droop down finally the entire plant withers droop down and it dies you're seeing the acerulae which are the initial symptoms that are seen in the midrib which are red in color uh, dark red in color in the center with red margins and they appear on the midrib region and these are the acerulae in which the conidia are produced and the hyphae that are uh, produced by the formation of conidia they spread all over the inside and they ramify inside the host tissue and just beneath, beneath the epidermis they form a stroma which is nothing but dense black cells and ultimately an acerulus is developed resulting in the rupture of the epidermis just below the epidermis the fungus that is there which is there inside the mesoderm will form a stroma which is a thick mat of mycelium from where the uh, conidiophores are produced and the conidia are developed and they come out by the rupture of the epidermis the acerulae base base long setae long hair like structures which are with pointed tips and uh, with conidiophores and these conidiophores in which the falcate that is sickle shaped conidia are produced sickle shaped which are slightly bent the conidia are called fac uh, falcate conidia this is the characteristic feature of this uh, pathogen called coletotrichum falcatum in addition to the uh, conidia the Uh, pathogen also produces uh, one more type of asexual spores called chlamydospores even chlamydospores also can spread disease in fact they can uh, uh, survive in the soil even after removing the or uh, harvesting the sugarcane crop they survive in the soil and they can cause reinfection when the uh, sugarcane is again planted in the same crop land that is why we actually go for crop rotation and uh, the uh, perfect stage of this pathogen is also known where the sexual reproduction has been studied and the perfect stage is called glomerella tucumanensis this is the perfect stage where the sexual reproduction is studied the mycelium of the fungus growth both internally and externally inside the parenchyma tissue it may be inter or intracellular in nature the hyphae are colorless slender freely branched and septate hyphae are septate and they produce a cellulite which are appearing on the nodes along the depressions around the ridges so a cellulite are the structures in which the conidia are produced and these a cellulite are black velvety bodies and they produce the uh, conidiophores and the conidiophores actually bear one celled conidia which are falcate in addition to conidia as i've already mentioned you get one more type of uh, uh, asexual spore that is chlamydospores they also cause the infection and these are the setae what you are seeing here in this picture and on the setae we have conidia setae are septate they are pointed and on the tip and on the surface of these uh, setae which are actually the conidiophores where we have the conidia produced all right so these conidia falcate in nature so the presence of setae which are hair like pointed uh, structures uh, are the characteristic feature of this pathogen in addition to that we have conidiophores on the conidiophores the falcate conidia are produced as i mentioned the per perfect stage was studied in 1953 and the pathogen may gain enter entry through the nodes at the leaf scars are the uh, uh, different types of wounds and they enter into the uh, stem and they start spreading inside it is also actually uh, spread by other uh, members like insects uh, the borers 
uh, maybe wind, maybe water. So there are different methods by which the quinidia and chlamydospores are spread from uh, infected plants to the uninfected healthy plants. Coming to the control and management of this disease, it's very difficult to control this disease because the uh, pathogen survives in the debris of the sugarcane and also it can survive in the uh, host plant inside. It is sometimes not seen from outside, it is there inside and uh, only when you cut open the set, set is the seeding material of the sugarcane and vertically split it, it may appear red in color. Apart from that, from outside you may not see sometimes. Uh, that is why it is very difficult to select the set that is the seeding material. That is the biggest problem. The other big problem is uh, you cannot uh, spray fungicides uh, to this because the pathogen is there inside the rind, inside the stem and it is very difficult. The only method by which you can control this disease is sanitation. You remove the infected uh, sugarcane plants, take it far away from the crop plant, burn it completely, destroy it completely. That is one way. Next way is uh, when you are selecting the sets, that is seed sets, select the uninfected ones. See carefully, examine carefully, select the best ones and then, then only you sow them. Next you can also treat the seeds, seed sets by using some fungicide like arasang and the best method is using of disease resistant varieties. Thank you very much for watching this video.